Hi guys, so in this recording I'm gonna tell you about data providers alright this is one of the most important topic of test ng and from interview perspective also one question is fixed from data providers alright okay now before I read this slide I want to show you something I'll take you back to parameters here I'm on I'm sending parameters to my test case which is username and password and if I go to testng.xml all right that's the parameter name and this is the value how many values for a parameter can you send once using this parameter only one value at a time you can't send more than one values of a parameter using this parameter annotation or parameter through testng.xml now what if I want to test my test case using multiple data set that's just not possible using parameters and that's the reason data providers come into picture so data providers are used to supply the values you need to test what is a data provider now data provider is again an annotation that we're going to use but data provider is also a method that we use in our class so we are going to write a method annotate it as a data provider and what's special about this data provider please listen to this carefully this data provider returns a double dimension object array this is the most important thing about data array uh, data providers why double dimension object array if you think logically here I'm talking about sending multiple data set I'll give you an example what I'm, I want to do is I want to open up a notepad okay no not here I'll just open up a new notepad okay now I want to send Akanksha and my surname and some number okay then I want to send this then I want to send this and then I want to send this let's say and all of them are different columns so what will you say how many rows are there there are two rows and there are three columns three columns with different values or different arguments now if you if I have to send hundred data set all right there'll be hundred items here and when I'm sending these items I'm actually sending three values as in three parameters hundred times that's just not possible using parameters but we can achieve this using data providers I'll take you back to the slide now okay this method is annotated with at the rate data provider how does it look it looks like this just have a look at the example take some time can you see there are two things here I've got a test case sorry I've this I've got this test case this test case is verified data and I have got another function provide data which has got double dimension object array as its return type and it's annotated with data provider so this is my data provider its name is data set it's returning a double dimension object array if you can see here I'm returning one column is a string column the other one is an integer column and how many values am I sending I'm sending two set of values this is one row and this is one row and this is another row where it is sending these values to this test why because it has clearly mentioned that I want to use data set as my data provider now since data provider is sending two columns this should be ready to take the values of those two columns and that's the reason I've got two parameters or two arguments here one is a string argument another one is an integer argument now when you call this it'll automatically be called the number of times equal to the data present here so if I've got 10 rows here 
this test case will run 10 times with 10 set of data. So this is how you use data providers. I'm going to take you to Eclipse so that we can see an example there. Okay, now I've already written this class, nothing much here. I'm just going to Facebook. I'm trying to log in here. But if you look at this carefully in this test function, I've got email ID and password just like parameterization. All right, I want to provide email ID and I want to provide password. But I want to provide more than one values of email ID and password. I want to run this test case, let's say for five email IDs and passwords. I can't do that using parameters, right? For this, I'm going to write a data provider here. So I'll create a function, let's say public void, sorry, not void, object array, double dimension object array. So I'm going to create this function. Let's name it as uh, maybe search provider. Okay. All right. Or maybe I don't like this name. I will name it as values to test. All right, that's it. Now, what is it supposed to return? A double dimension object array. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to create an object array here. Let's name it as values and initialize as it as null. And let's say values is equal to new object. I'll scroll this down new object. This is a double dimension area. I'm going to dynamically set the size. Now look at this. I'm going to add the values here. So let's say since I'm going to give user IDs and passwords, I'll randomly pick two user IDs. Okay, comma, password one. So that's one value. Close the curly braces. Put a comma. Again, start curly braces to give the second set of values. So I will say Ashish Mishra dot M A N I T at Gmail. That's my user ID and password is let's say password two. Okay, the second set of value is complete. So how many set are there? Two set of values. How many columns are there? Two columns. You can have any number of columns. You can have any number of values. Okay, so this is done. I'm going to close this and put this. Okay, what am left? What am I left with to return this object array? So return values. That's done. Okay, control save. Now I will do control A, control shift F. All right, so it looks good. The formatted code. Now, what am I trying to do here? I want to use this data provider somewhere. Where in this function. So what will I do? I will simply say that you have to use a data provider. Control space, you have to use data provider. So put data provider is equal to. Now what is the name of the data provider? I haven't in, I haven't annotated it with data provider. So let me first of all do that. Data provider. I want to name it as um, let's say data provider. That's the name. Okay. And I will use this as data provider. So that's my data provider. I want to use this data provider here in this function. Now, if you don't choose to give it a name, then what will you give here? You will simply say data provider is equal to values to test. You can also give the function name if you're not giving any name to your data provider. Okay, so I'm giving data provider here. I've simply mentioned, see, this function is supposed to use this data provider to bring in the data. That's it. That's it. It's very simple. People think it's difficult. No, it's not difficult at all. It's very easy and it's amazing. Let's run this class. Right click, run as test ng test. One instance done. This is the second instance. 
All right, so it ran perfectly fine. It opened up Facebook on the same browser instance because I've already instantiated it here. All right, so this is done. I hope you've understood what is data providers okay in the next class i'm going to tell you about very interesting stuff that how can you have data providers in a separate class and call it from a different class all right and one more thing that we will learn is how you can use the same data provider differently for different functions it's an interesting thing so we will be covering this in the next recording all right guys i hope you loved learning data providers i would want you to practice this as much as possible till we meet in the next class bye